This is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk about a very famous recording artist, one who is somewhat forgotten today, but well known to record collectors. His name was Nat M. Wills. Nat M. Wills was known as the hobo comedian. He was uh, in so many shows. Uh, he was the second person to play at the palace. Gotta remember, in the old days, if you made the palace, you had made it. Nat M. Wills was famous everywhere he went. He was in lamb frolics. He was in all different types of programs for so many different shows. He made a number of Victor, Columbia, and Edison recordings. His story called No News or What Killed the Dog is listed as the hundred greatest stories ever told. Who was Nat M. Wills? And what happened to Nat M. Wills? I always wondered when I first started collecting. I found recordings of Nat M. Wills and I found scant information about him. When I finally did find some information about his life, I discovered it was painfully short. He was born in 1873, and he would die in 1917. He would live just 44 years. Now, what about Nat M. Wills? I'm going to try to tell you a few things about it. I'm not going to go into too much depth. But, you know, he he became famous pretty early in his career. He did pretty good. He did all different types of shows and eventually developed a character. And this character, I'm just going to go from that point because I've only got ten minutes here. And you know how, well, you know how people who do history can talk. <laughs> so I I wanted to tell you that he became famous in the early part of the the 20th century is really, really when he took off. And of course, when he did that no news or what killed the dog or got involved in the lamb frolics or many of the other programs, uh, the Ziegfeld Follies, also appearing uh, with uh, Weber and Fields and their programs, and uh, as I said before, playing the palace. But I want to tell you that there was another side of this individual that we don't hear of very often. The one thing about this individual is he was very depressed. He was always broke. No matter what he seemed to do, he never seemed to have the money to survive. He was married four times in those short 44 years. There were some children that came from the marriages. He was paying alimony on all of them. He eventually had no assets what to, whatsoever, which was listed in the various papers and he would eventually spend a good deal of time living at the Lambs Club in a little dorm room, which was on 44th Street uh, in um, New York City. It was right across the street from the Hudson Theater, as a matter of fact. He lived there for a number of years. Finally, he kind of got himself together to a degree and married the fourth time. He had another child, and he moved and bought a house in New Jersey. In fact, he lived on number 231 Street in uh, Woodcliffe, New Jersey. And there he seemed to start his life all over again. There was happiness in his life again. There's something about comedians. So many of them are so sad. I'm always reminded what W.C. Fields said about Burt Williams, the great 
comedian. He said he was the funniest man I ever saw and the saddest man I ever knew. He would also die young, and we'll talk about him another day. But Nat M. Wills was a car enthusiast. And a terrible thing happened, according to his, listen to the news story on December the 10th, 1917, announcing his death. That Nat M. Wills went into the garage of his house locked all the doors to the garage and turned on the car. Well, everyone was looking for him and all the doors were locked. They finally broke open one of the doors and there he was, dead, with the key to the garage door in his hand dead. It was over. It was 44 years old. What would drive someone to do this? Was it suicide? It seems so. He was a car enthusiast. He understood cars. He knew you had to evacuate the exhaust. So it seems to me at least that he decided it was time to get away from it all. And so the man that made so many laugh would die alone with a car that he made fun of all the time. You know, he had a Ford. He made fun of Model T Fords all the time. Finally died by one. Pretty sad, isn't it? Someone of so much talent. I've often thought if Nat M. Wills lived you know, into his 60s. We would have seen him in talking pictures. He might have done great and wonderful things. But he died, left a child. His funeral would take place at Campbell's on 66th Street in New York City. And then he would be entombed uh, in, uh, in the Bronx in New York. Yeah, not even in his own tomb but in a borrowed one and that's where he remains to this day the great hobo comedian Nat M. Wills a funny man who died so sadly